Is it a hip pain or a spine pain? A diagnostic dilemma. So the hip and the spine pathology share the same complaints and their symptoms may overlap. That will make the diagnosis and treatment of these patients difficult and challenging. Due to our aging population, more and more people are having arthritis of the hip and arthritis of the lumbar spine and lumbar stenosis. And it may be difficult to differentiate hip pathology from lower spine pathology. Doctor, is it my hip or my spine that's causing me pain? Our job as physicians is to find out the primary source of pain. You want to be sure about the primary source of pain first. Is it the hip or is it the spine? And you want to tackle the primary source of pain. Hip spine syndrome is becoming popular. Both hip and spine problems are occurring together and both have overlapping presentations and symptoms. It may be difficult for the treating physician to determine if the patient's symptoms comes from the hip or comes from the spine or from both. And many of these patients seen several physicians and had multiple imaging studies and various procedures without relief. And the key factor for this problem is to consider the two can occur together. You need to obtain careful history and physical exam. You may want to use some imaging, even advanced imaging, and some procedures before you decide to do surgery in that patient. Spine surgery or hip surgery, because surgery can be complicated. So you want to hit the pause button and sort things out. And if you decide to do surgery, you want to know the order which one will be done first. You want to warn the patient that after we take care of this first problem, then the patient may have symptoms from the second problem that we need to address in the future. So we must strive to diagnose both entities to decrease the chance of any misdiagnosis or delay of the treatment. If you have a patient with a spine problem, ask the patient if they have a hip problem and you should point to the area of the hip pain. A patient with a hip problem or lumbar spine problem can have low back pain. So if you have a patient with a hip problem, ask the patient if the patient have a spine problem. Our doctors are specialists and the hip doctor focus on a hip problem. The spine doctor focus on a spine problem. Even if the hip doctor gets a spine MRI and it shows positive findings, it doesn't mean the patient have a spine problem because there's a lot of patients that have positive MRI findings but are asymptomatic. So it is complicated. Therefore, you find the patient that have the hip spine syndrome had a delay in diagnosis and treatment. The hip spine syndrome can be simple, straightforward. You know which is the primary source of pain, despite the fact you have hip and lumbar spine pathology. Only one clear source of disability is present. Or it can be complex. You don't know which one is the primary source of pain, despite careful history and physical examination. In addition, the patient comes with x-rays and MRIs and both got the two conditions. You will find that the common complaint for patients with both hip and lumbar spine problems will include groin pain, buttock pain, thigh pain, low back pain, and maybe knee pain. The patient will need additional tests, including procedures such as diagnostic injection or EMG. The symptoms of one area can be secondary to the pathology of the other. For example, if you have arthritis of the hip and flexion contracture of the hip, you may have hyperlordosis of the spine causing foraminal stenosis 
or scoliosis that causes pelvic obliquity with a stabular tilt and the femoral head will be uncovered. And that will create difficulty during the surgery of a total hip. The other entity is misdiagnosis of the hip spine syndrome, that the primary source of pain is incorrectly diagnosed, which results in inappropriate, expensive studies and treatment. The hip and lumbar spine symptoms mimic each other. The source of the referred hip pain will include all the lumbar nerve roots, which will include the obturator, the femoral, and the sciatic nerves. The secondary source of pain may need to be addressed if symptoms persist after treating the primary source of pain. So what are the common presentations for both entities? Hip arthritis has the classic presentation. The patient will have hip and groin pain. The patient will be limping and will have antalgic gait. Patient with groin pain is seven times more likely to have a hip disorder only or a combined lesion and rarely a spine condition alone. The buttock area is the most common region of referred pain in an isolated hip pathology, followed by combined thigh and groin pain and never to the lumbar spine. Pain radiating below the knee can occur from a spine or hip arthritis, about 47% in hip arthritis. Pain over the greater true canter, usually hip pathology, rarely spine pathology. And when the patients say, I have hip pain, ask the patient to point at the site of the pain. The patient understanding of the hip is different than our understanding of the hip. So the patient thinks the buttock is the hip. So ask the patient, is the pain in the front, on the side, or is in the back? In general, patients with hip arthritis will have pain in weight-bearing with decreased range of motion and pain with rotation of the hip. So if you have a patient with a limp, groin pain, and decreased range of motion of the hip, that patient probably has arthritis of the hip. In patients above the age of 45, you find hip arthritis in about 27% of the population. Symptomatic osteoarthritis is present in about 10% of this population. You must correlate the clinical examination with the X-ray findings and the MRI findings. If you have a hip, or a spine problem. Just because he's seen arthritis in the x-ray of the hip, it doesn't mean it's causing the problem. And the patient with the lumbar spine stenosis or a spine condition will have similar problem of difficulty in walking. If the patient has parathesia or radiculopathy, then the workup emphasis should be on the spine. The patient with spinal stenosis may have pain down the leg and sometimes below the knee. In a spinal stenosis, the physical exam may be normal and the patient really has neurological deficit. In lumbar stenosis, the patient will have neurologic claudication with back and lower extremity pain that's worse by ambulation and is relieved by sitting and bending forward. They call it the shopping cart sign. Straightening the spine during walking causes increased lumbar lordosis and narrowing the foramen and the spinal canal causing pain. Patient with femoral stenosis at L1 and L2 level or with facet arthritis may present with growing pain. Check the patient's clinical alignment in sagittal and coronal planes. Check Thomas' test to evaluate for hip flexion contracture. The sacroiliac joint pathology symptoms overlap with spine symptoms and hip symptoms. So what are the common studies or tests that can help to resolve that puzzle? An MRI, 
many positive findings can be seen in asymptomatic patients, which increases with age. So you want to correlate the clinical findings with the MRI findings. Another test is the EMG and nervous studies. You want to differentiate spinal stenosis from peripheral nerve compression and diabetes. If the patient has growing pain, then you need to do further evaluation. You need to get an x-ray and you may need to give the patient injection. If the patient gets more than 50% relief from injection, then it is a hip problem. And the total hip may be helpful. If there is no relief from the hip injection, then evaluate the spine and do the appropriate imaging. The patient needs to do lifestyle changes, including weight reduction, diet control, and the aerobic exercises, such as swimming. Patient needs to stop smoking because smoking is harmful to the tissue. The treatment usually starts with physiotherapy and anti-inflammatory medication. The patient may need injection or surgery if he doesn't respond to physiotherapy. On lateral hip pain, it may be to contract bursitis, then do injection. Not every patient would need surgery. If it is spine decompression or a hip replacement, both surgical procedures are difficult, and it may be hard on the patient to have two major surgeries in a short period of time, so you got to space them out. Sometimes surgical treatment of one problem may decrease the symptoms caused by the other problem. About 50% of the patient complain of low back pain before they had the total hip procedure, and 60% of the patient had resolution of their symptoms after the total hip replacement surgery. The patient with severe lumbar stenosis, decompression of the spine should be done first before the total hip. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.